Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Current Issue Show on True Chat, broadcasting from Studio 2A in Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm Justin T. Weller. I'm Cam Pierce. And I'm Lance Jackson. As always, thank you very much for tuning in to today's show. And our lineup today includes one very important topic, and that's Trump revising his tax plan. And it's raising uh, the top rate. And we're looking into some discussion here about what do we think about his plan. So we're actually getting into the idea of this policy, do we like it? We're also going to look at how it coincides with other plans he has, and whether or not this completely makes his other plans infeasible. So we're going to talk about all that, but before we get started, how are you doing today, Scott? I'm Lance. Lance, Scott. <laughs> it's interchangeable. Want to start again? Like, no. No? Okay. All right. Uh, See, they made me change my name, then they, they it's hard to This close. Right. That was a pretty perfect yeah, that, that was, was a pretty, pretty perfect intro, besides for yeah. that. Um, I'm doing more. pretty well, actually. Yeah, yeah, all things considered, not bad. It was a great week last week. Tough day to day, but uh, we'll go with, in there. we'll go with it. Yeah. And you know. if you want more on how Scott's or Lance's week has been, depending on what you prefer, you can tune into the True Chat show this week. Like I said, call me whatever you want, we'll just don't call there. me late so, for dinner. Cam. Okay. You doing all right? I'm fine. Yeah, rock and rolling. I'm interested to talk about this. We don't. We do not get to talk with Trump enough about the brass tax. About what yep. he actually wants to do. Because well, this is the first time he's actually done it. Well, that's, okay. No, we can talk right. about right. it. Yeah. Not, not technically true. Uh, okay. econ- Ooh, hello. Economics. That's what I'm looking for. Is uh, <laughs> since the uh, primaries. This is the first time he's gotten deep down to economics, but. He's, he's mentioned his other plans a couple times. Feasibility of them, oh. that's where we can argue. Oh, you mean building a wall? Da, da, da. Right, oh, but okay. other plans are a little more fleshed out than I'm going to build He knows a wall. more about ISIS right. and the generals and all that kind of stuff. All right, so, yeah. without yeah. further ado, I do have a few facts today that the gentlemen on the show here were not privy to, and it's just a fun fact session kind of at the end, so oh, Cam's going to hate it. But I am going to hate it's it. It's actually some stuff he asked for last week, okay. so I'm holding Maybe true I'm to my promise. So, you know, if he could remember what he asked me to do last week on the show, then that's correct. He would know what I'm about to present. But nonetheless, it's here. About to present or at I the stay end? prepared at the end. Okay. About to present in the 15 minutes that we're going to do this show. Fair enough. So, Trump is revising his plan and raising the top rate. This is from CNN. So, I think this is the first article we've done from CNN in quite a while. We reference them a lot, but I don't think we've actually quoted an article from CNN. So,. Trump's new proposal would more than have the numbers of income tax brackets and reduce rates for most Americans to 12%, 25%, and 33%. That's higher than the 10, 20, and 25 rates that Trump proposed last year as he campaigned for the Republican nomination, tooting his tax reform plan as offering the lowest income tax rates of any of his GOP opponents. Americans in the top income bracket are currently taxed at 39.6%. Trump also vowed again Monday that the poorest Americans will have a zero tax rate, which he included in his initial proposal. Quote, it's a conversation about how to make America great again for everyone, and especially, and I say especially, for those who have the very least, Trump said. Continuing on, uh, the article spoke to Jack Kingston, a Trump advisor, uh, and he said this is where we need to drill down and keep talking about over and over and over again. Uh, And he was on the show New Day when he said this on CNN. You know, 67% of the people recently polled said they do not like the track that America's on. They're uncomfortable, and he's speaking to them, and he's talking responsi- he's, ta- he's taking responsibility. And he says, I'm going to be a jobs president. I'm going to reduce regulations on small businesses. And I'm going to cut taxes, their taxes. I'm going to allow America to grow, he added. We do not need a third term of Obamanomics. So, coin that term, apparently, on New Day. Clinton has been pulling away from Trump in recent polling following his disastrous battle with the Gold Star parents of slain Iraq war veteran Captain uh, Khan. The latest CNN poll of polls shows Clinton beating Trump 49-39% nationwide. But a CNN poll in June and a more recent Fox News survey found that voters trust Trump more than Clinton on the economy. The Clinton campaign fired off a blast against the Trump plan Monday morning before his speech, arguing that it was rooted in big tax breaks for corporations and businesses and would likely lead to a recession. 
A Trump presidency would cause damage to the American economy and working families, Clinton's economic advisors argue in the memo. Clinton running mate Tim Kaine tweeted Monday, quote, Donald Trump is only in it for himself. Just look at his economic plan. So, on that note, we're going to open with Cam, the man, today. He is our uh, executive vice president here at True Shed and in charge of engagement for the company. It's true. And he's been on the Current Issues show since the beginning. So, his, All true facts. His credentials as a Republican are quite established. And on that note, we'll turn our attention to him to get his initial thoughts. Of uh, just article in general, or no? I don't care what you think of the article. I'm okay, great. Far more interested <laughs> in what you think about his plan. As a Republican, do you want this plan? Let's start with answering that one. All right, and then reasoning. So the plan is a whole no, but okay. let me give so no to the plan. No to the plan. But let me give let me give Trump some some thumbs up from me personally. He has he he takes the number of tax brackets in half. This I like. He's making less tax brackets, thus making the tax code a little less confusing, even though it's only at the base level. So this I like, which I would assume that you would like as well, just, you know, working towards that flat tax, and I think we've all said is, is just a much more simpler way uh, and a way that we would like, you know, taxes to eventually go if that's a place where we would want it to be. Now, the amount of tax money that he's going to be bringing in just isn't enough uh, to, you know, decrease the debt at all. I don't know uh, if, if today he was talking more about what he wants to cut, but if you want to lower taxes, you obviously have to cut certain things, uh, which I would assume would probably be social programs and the normal litany of things that Republicans normally want uh, to cut uh, on, on the normal budget. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't really love it as much as uh, you know, a normal Republican would want to. I mean, I was I just said that it, it. There's nothing in this plan that says what he's going to cut. Now, like I said, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's maybe he talked about that today, and while we were preparing for the show, we weren't necessarily privy to everything he was talking about in his speech today, which was given, I believe, in Detroit. Uh, so, but there there isn't enough plan here for me to be totally okay with it. So yet. you don't like it because of the lack of plan behind it. I, Correct. Okay. That, that is that is one of the. And reasons. on that note, Lance. Yes. How do you feel about this here tax plan? Well, uh, not a big fan of it, but um, you know I think it's interesting to note that in the article, it speaks to the fact that he's aligning himself with um, House Speaker Paul Ryan, and you know Paul Ryan obviously has been pushing his own uh, tax agenda and budget, budget agenda um, since he ran for the vice presidency as the vice presidential nominee for the Republicans four years ago. So I think it's interesting from that point in that uh, here he was feuding with Paul Ryan less than a week ago and not wanting to endorse him to now wrapping his arms around and embracing the Paul Ryan income tax plan. So uh, I think that's an interesting move on his part. Um, the fact that he read from a teleprompter and stayed on, on message I think is good for him um, as he tries to uh, as you pointed out, claw out from under uh, the table, so to speak, uh, of getting bombarded for doing all kinds of things last week that, that really hurt him in the polls. So, um, you know, the idea that it's a, a lower tax bracket's okay, but as we talked about last week, Trump nowhere in any of his proposals, um, nor Hillary Clinton, are addressing the balancing the budget. So I think to bring this up and to talk about whether or not this balances the budget is immaterial because neither one of them have that really as a campaign issue. So um, in his whole idea, it's been proven time and time again when he says, the poorest Americans won't pay any income tax. Yeah, well, they don't now. It doesn't matter what his right. plan states. The current plan. It makes, sounds nice. Yeah, it sounds nice. But all as it was pointed out when he was running as a Republican uh, nominee, uh, you know, running in the primaries, that is not a big deal because the current system, the poorest people don't pay any. So you just tax. really don't think it does all that much. It's just a different version of. Well, but Paul I think Ryan. it's interesting that he he, he starts right. to become cohesive with Paul Ryan. Yeah. And less than it a week is. ago, he was you know one of the the bigger. Uh, he was pulling away from Paul Ryan in any way that he could publicly, anyway. And now, when he takes such a hit in the polls, now he's going to become on message, and he's going to hook up with a Paul Ryan idea. That's what I find interesting mm -hmm. about um, this his well, proposal. I would like to take a brief second and go off topic. 
to apologize to the audience for that terrible paper noise that you've been hearing the whole time Scott's been talking. See, this is subconscious warfare here that Camden's waging, making a very annoying, subtle noise that we can hardly hear, but that that microphone has just been picking up tremendously this entire time and completely distracted you during the entire time Scott was speaking, or Lance. So, I apologize about that. I think they were focused in on me. Well, I hope so. I, we'll I think they did, but it's okay. We'll see. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Camden can subterfuge my ideas. <clears throat> I was speaking factually, and um, you know, it's not a Trump hater. Like I said, I don't hate on it. I just don't think it doesn't address uh, a balanced budget, and I find it interesting that he is now going to walk in step with Paul Ryan. I like the concept of flat tax. However, you have to discuss what tax breaks you're going to take away. Um, and I think that's the deeper, the deeper part of this. Is it going to be a true flat tax, or you know, are you taking away um, the housing uh, piece? Are you taking away uh, taxing interest that people get? Um, are you taxing there? So what do you do uh, as president? What would what's I, your executive summary on your plan? What would I do? Yeah, what's the goal? Um, I I honestly feel like you have to tax businesses higher. The reason being, when businesses back in the 50s, which many people look at, the Republican age of uh, Dwight Eisenhower and when America was growing, and I guess where Trump wants to take us back to America great again, the income tax rate on businesses was at 90%. The reason what that did was there was no benefit for the company to make more and more money because it was just going to go to the government. So what business owners did is they turned around and gave their... Uh, employees raises, <clears throat> excuse me, they built better places uh, for their employees to work because they would reinvest the money in their company because they didn't necessarily want to make more profit. So you'd raise because it on, more profit raise went it on to the government. I mean, if you really want to go back to, right. to raise, what, it, raise it on businesses, lower it on individuals? Right. Okay. Because that would achieve what everybody's, I think, as I listen to what people want. They want better salaries. They want better working conditions. They want all this stuff, and they want the rich people to to be to have to pay their fair share. <clears throat> if you and I know this goes against the grain, but if you go back and study the tax rates in the 1950s, corporate rates were 80 and 90 percent. The reason being, then companies weren't trying to make the almighty dollar because it didn't do them any good. So they would take profit, and instead of declaring it as profit, put it back into the company. So it became a better place to work, raises, bonuses, Christmas bonuses, all those kinds of things that goes back to the Eisenhower Republican days post-World War II era when the corporate taxes were the highest that they've ever been in the 20th century in the United States. But personal tax levels were fairly low. So Cam, your tax plan, your executive summary of your tax plan. I, yeah, he gave no percentages except for the 80 to 90, but whatever. I, it, you know, you've got uh, to... Raising it that high would not be realistic, I think, at this point. I, and it it may be what the people want, but a, a more a more realistic percentage would probably be you know five to ten percent more than what businesses are currently paying. Um, I still think that that tax needs to rise. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not a true a born and bred Republican in that sense. Uh, but I I think personal taxes probably need to rise as well, which is also not a, a very big Republican thing. I, I am more about getting the national debt down, which is if that means we have to have a little bit less income for everyone, I think that's the way we need to go. So sort of increase it exponentially so that everyone is still paying a fair share and that do do at least some math here in these certain income brackets where, hey, can people live with this much of an increase? And while, you know, inflation rates and where will goods, where will a gallon of milk go in the next five years? Where will, you know, a, a loaf of bread go in the next five to ten years and exponentially raise it. I wouldn't have these numbers in front of me right now, obviously, but exponentially raise it so that you would have people still being able to make ends meet, but being able to pay off that national debt and being able to balance the budget is something we can do probably in the next five to ten years. But I didn't give you a rate so, because I'm not for a flat tax. Right. Fair enough. Which so is I, why, that's why I didn't give you a rate is because I'm not for a flat tax. So flat tax, ultimately you want corporate taxes and personal taxes <clears throat> to go up. Right. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is all the time that we have for today. We are going to probably do a show, though, on the uh, ideology of the media and if it's actually possible to be a responsible conservative media source. Uh, we will examine that 
next week on the Monday edition of the Current Issues Show. And we'll also, of course, be bringing you our other programming as well. But a special report is underway from True Chat on that. So if you've enjoyed the special reports in the past, please stay tuned for that. This information was provided by Pew Research, by the way. So a fairly respected source when it comes to polling. Uh, and that's exactly what this is, is just good old-fashioned polling. On that note, as always, thank you very much for tuning into the Current Issues Show on True Chat, broadcasting from Studio 2A in Cincinnati, Ohio, on this lovely Monday, August 8th. Is that where we are? Yes, yes. Monday, August 8th. Monday, August 8th, 2016. I'm Justin T. Weller. I'm Cam Pierce. And I'm Leah Stanton. As always, thank you very much for tuning in. And we'll see you next time on the Current Issues Show. Be the change.